Cholecystitis literally means inflammation of the gallbladder. Now, the reason the gallbladder is inflamed is because of gallstones. Gallstones has a fancy name. It's called cholelithiasis. Now, these stones are actually made up of fat. They're made up of cholesterol. So the person at risk for this is a fat, fertile female of 40. The patient's going to experience severe right upper quadrant pain, especially after eating fatty meals. They'll also have nausea and vomiting, especially after the meals. The patient can also have something called Murphy's sign. This is when you ask the patient to exhale, you press on the right upper quadrant, and then as they inhale, their gallbladder and liver come down and touch your hand, causing pain. This is known as a positive Murphy sign. Another symptom they can have is increase in bilirubin levels. Normally, the bilirubin is made by the liver and stored in the gallbladder and released through the bile whenever you eat food. But in this case, there's a stone that's in the way of getting rid of the bile. So the bilirubin levels go up and the patient gets jaundice. Jaundice means yellowing. The places where you want to check for jaundice is the nail beds, the sclera, and the skin. The patient can also have pruritus, which means itchy skin, dark urine, clay-colored stools, and something called steteria. Steteria means greasy, floaty poop. The initial diagnostic for this patient is going to be an ultrasound, the same one they use for babies. Now, what this is for is to find the stone. Your job is to make sure the patient is NPO before this procedure. The next diagnostic they use is something called an ERCP or an EGD. Both of these are endoscopic procedures, which means they stick a camera down the throat all the way through the stomach and into the small intestine to look at the bile ducts. Your job is to make sure the patient is NPO before this procedure and you check gag reflex afterwards. The reason you have to check gag reflex is because they stick a camera down the throat. They also fully sedate the patient so the patient's asleep. And afterwards, they're going to have a really sore throat and they're not going to be able to swallow anything. So you have to ch make sure to check gag reflex before they start eating and drinking again. Now, how you check for gag reflex is you can ask the patient to cough a few times. You can use a tongue blade. You can ask the patient to take a small sip of water and see if they can swallow it. Or you can get a barium swallow study done. This is a test where the patient drinks barium and an x-ray gets done while they're swallowing. This is to see what's going on in their upper GI while they're swallowing. Now the treatment for cholecystitis is to initially make the patient NPO. The reason we make the patient NPO is to rest their GI. If they eat food, then their gallbladder is going to want to release more bile, which it can't and cause further inflammation. After making the patient NPO, what we want to do next is have proper pain control, give a medication called Undantentron, which is an antiemetic used to stop nausea and vomiting, and we want to prepare the patient for surgery. Now, the most common type of surgery is called laparoscopic cholecystectomy. This is not so invasive because they use cameras in tiny little incisions on the abdomen, and they use stick these cameras and these tools in order to cut the gallbladder and then pull it out. They also inflate the abdomen with CO2 in order to do the procedure. One of the side effects of using CO2 to inflate the abdomen is that it causes shoulder tip pain afterwards. This type of pain is called referred pain and it's expected after the procedure. It's caused by the CO2 irritating the phrenic nerve. This type of pain should go away after a few days. Another type of surgery that can be used is called an open cholecystectomy. An open cholecystectomy is when they make a large incision and take out the gallbladder. They're not very common anymore, but you should still know what it is. After the procedure, they put a T-tube in place to drain the bile that's there. You should expect about 500 ml of green drainage per day. Because this procedure is a lot more invasive, you make sure after the surgery, you monitor respirations, make the patient NPO and advanced diet as tolerated. You should expect absent bowel sounds because they just did a very invasive surgery. You also want to teach the patient to cough, deep breathe, and use incentive spirometry to prevent pneumonia. If the patient's having a hard time coughing and deep breathing, then you want to have the patient splint. This is when the patient puts a pillow over their abdomen over the incision to make it easier to cough and deep breathe. You also want to provide pain medication as this will let the patient cough and deep breathe. Now when you discharge the patient, make sure you teach them to eat small, frequent, low-fat meals because this is what caused it in the first place, that they'll be very gassy and bloated because of the CO2, and to expect to have diarrhea for a few days. Alright guys, that's everything you need for cholecystitis.